Hi. I'm Felicia. Coach Richmond has entrusted me to be your narrator for this audiobook summary series. In this audiobook, I'll be reading to you, How to Be an Adult in Relationships, Five Keys to Mindful Loving by award-winning author and renowned psychotherapist, David Rico. Let's go. Chapter 1. Love is Beyond the Butterflies You Feel in Your Stomach. It is in our human nature to always risk love, despite past experiences or the terrible stories we hear. You must, however, realize that no relationship succeeds all by itself. In other words, love alone is not enough. Making your relationship work requires certain skills, and you will learn many of those skills in this summary. Author David Richo defines love as giving and receiving with what he calls the five A's. They are attention, acceptance, appreciation, affection, and allowing. All of these come together to fulfill our intimate needs. By learning to be compassionate and mindful, people can learn to give and receive the five A's. Although the five A's are given to others, they make an individual more loving as he or she gives them. They are, therefore, the components of building the virtue of love in ourselves. In this summary, you will learn how each of the five A's applies to childhood, relationships, and spiritual maturity. You will also learn practices that can help you resolve chaos from childhood, maintain great relationships, and become more mindful, compassionate, and spiritually conscious. Chapter 2. Mindfulness Helps Us to Express and Experience Love How some children grow up is responsible for the type of adults they become. Most of our emotional needs for attention, acceptance, appreciation, affection, and allowing, the five A's, begin from childhood and then expand in adulthood. However, the human heart and mind want more. If, in childhood, we found all the emotional satisfaction we ever needed, we would have no motivation to reach out to the wider world. But it does not work that way, hence the search for a partner as adults. Without having the need or desire for a partner, a person might be deceived or tempted to remain in the comfort of their home, staying away from the larger world. True love helps to forgive and let go of the past by allowing an individual to progress to the point of loving another person intimately. True love, which consists of the five A's, is necessary for all forms of growth, both psychological and spiritual. As we grow in any environment, we need the loving and nurturing of our inner self to experience overall growth. Being mindful is also a way our love can be nurtured and expressed because it helps us accept people for who they are and not judge them. So, in essence, the practice of mindfulness is an avenue to give others the five A's, true love, respect, regard, and support. Putting others first does not mean that we do not have desires or wants, it only means we are ready to put them aside and focus on bringing deep awareness and compassion to relationships. This is a key to practicing love and fulfillment. Chapter 3. True Intimacy is Necessary for Relationships to Survive Relationships usually start when individuals leave their family or familiar surroundings, go through unknown territory, and then find a partner. Every long-lasting relationship is marked by true intimacy. Intimacy entails mirroring, having a partner who can replicate your thoughts, help your personal goals, and understand your feelings. It also involves being open and not allowing someone else to hurt you. The best partners can come at any time, and as humans, we usually trust the universe to bring us someone great and kind. This is good because in the process of longing for true love, it is important to care for, and guard our hearts. One way to go about this is learning to differentiate between love and attachment. People often confuse attachment for love, but they are two different things. To begin with, attachment is stagnant, it doesn't involve true intimacy and does not progress. But love is the opposite. When two people are in love, the relationship will go through various stages of growth that enhance intimacy. We also need to realize that not every individual is cut out for love. Some people are better with light acquaintances than with intimate or romantic relationships. You can tell if intimate relationships are for you, by evaluating your personality and motive for wanting a partner. The easiest test to conduct is asking yourself if you are comfortable living with and sharing your life with another person. How do you come to know if someone will make a great partner? 
evaluate their willingness to give and receive love. Also, check if you two can tolerate each other. Suitable candidates for an intimate relationship are someone who lives reasonably close and has no distracting ties that make commitment difficult, someone who has no limiting addictions, and someone who shares your interests with you. Chapter 4. Trust and romance are essential in relationships. Unmet needs and expectations such as unfulfilled dreams from a person's past or childhood hover over most of their relationships. This is why trust and self-disclosure are important in relationships. You should be willing to tell your partner what to expect from you and your typical reaction to certain situations. Also, share your faults, shortcomings, and strengths with your partner if you seek long-term commitment. Avoid sexualizing all your emotional needs because a relationship based solely on sex will burn out after a while. Sex is meant to be fun and pleasurable for both partners, not a selfish act. Broadly speaking, there are two phases of love, the romantic phase and the intentional commitment phase. Romance is one of the strongest of human experiences. Romantic partners magically meet each other's needs without thinking much about it. This phase feels like heaven. But it is temporary. Although it is a good way to begin a love relationship, the union will only survive if it leads to mature commitment. People in love should be careful not to fall into romantic addiction, which is very different from romance. In the latter, both partners relate with each other and feel the same way, while in addiction, only one partner is possessed by the other. If you realize you are battling addiction, you should not feel shame. Get help as soon as possible because you often cannot overcome it alone. Chapter 5. Resolve Conflicts Through Cooperation and Partnerships Romance shows the bright side of your relationship, while conflict represents the dark side. Both are important, but let's talk about the latter. Conflict is necessary and useful for building a strong bond. The switch from romance to conflict happens in three stages. 1. The ideal stage where the situations are rosy. 2. The normal stage where the excitement and lovey-dovey reduces. 3. The low ebb stage where the stress is high, breakdown occurs, and depression sets in. Try to keep conflicts from getting to the third stage, where things are difficult to resolve. If proper work is done to resolve conflicts, they may turn out to be blessings in disguise. Cooperation and partnership are the major keys to resolving conflicts. You should also be committed to working things out between yourself and your partner. Start by absorbing these values. Commit to always explaining and telling the truth as it is. Always make choices that show you value your relationship. With a few exceptions, men and women are known to address conflicts differently. For most men, addressing issues may mean stating the problem now, getting straight to the point, and then forgetting about it. But for women, addressing issues may mean talking and talking until both parties know what they are talking about. This involves dwelling on issues until the woman feels heard and appreciated. Being an extrovert or introvert can also determine how easily conflict is resolved. You often cannot love an extrovert the same way you love an introvert. They are two different types of people, one likes to socialize, and the other doesn't. The key is to understand your partner, know how they react to situations, and act in emotional languages they understand. To avoid conflicts, make a commitment to yourself and to your partner that you will always raise issues of concern rather than cover them up or disregard them. And you will always address an issue by making the implicit, explicit. Chapter 6. Fear and Infidelity Can Stale Good Relationships People begin to fear intimacy when they are afraid of what may happen if they show love and don't get it back in the same proportion or if the partner later gets tired of them and wants to call it quits. Engulfment and abandonment are central fears in relationships. Engulfment is the fear of losing your freedom in the face of intimacy. This usually occurs as a result of too much attention, affection, inadequate acceptance, or conceding. The fear of abandonment is the opposite of engulfment. It is the fear that you will not survive emotionally if your partner leaves you. This fear typically results from the loss of attention, appreciation, and affection. The average individual may feel both abandonment and engulfment fears. 
However, you will often find that one fear tends to be more common and that one partner experiences more of one fear than their partner. These fears stem from our childhood and past relationship experiences. When you sense too much of it in yourself or your partner, then it is time to talk about it. Let the affected partner be assured of love. And if there is anything that needs to be resolved, take active steps towards it. Let's talk about infidelity. The first thing you should know is that infidelity is a couple's issue, not an individual one. It may seem to be more of a significant issue for the offending partner, but infidelity does not just happen. Something went wrong over time that led to it. This is understandably hard for the offended partner to accept, but it is true. Rather than blame infidelity on the cheating partner, it is important to make them see their wrong and let them realize how much their actions have hurt their partners. But beyond that, both partners should work together to heal and protect their union. If the cheating partner is unwilling to change, then there is almost nothing that can be done about the situation. Infidelity also triggers the fear of engulfment and abandonment in both partners. You can overcome or significantly reduce these fears by using the triple approach. Admit the fear. Allow yourself to feel it. Act as if you are not afraid. Chapter 7. Don't let your ego get in the way of your happiness. Ego shows itself when partners in a relationship are mainly concerned with proving themselves right all the time. The opposite of ego is cooperative love, when partners are concerned with how to make their relationship work. You need to eliminate the FACE of the inflated ego, which is fear, attachment, control, and entitlement. The ego is the major obstacle to intimacy. It is healthy when it helps us make good decisions and fulfill our purpose. A healthy ego also makes it easy for others to love us since it breeds the courage we need to share who we are in unique and free-spirited ways. A good relationship will help us to get over a bad ego. It erases our self-centeredness and helps us discover how love can turn beautiful when we let go of the need to prove ourselves. Don't let feelings of entitlement ruin your relationship. It is okay to expect things from your partner but you will drain them emotionally when the entitlement becomes too much. Rather than fold your hand and see what your partner can do for you, follow the age-old advice, always seek what you can do for them first. This will keep you from being self-centered. Chapter 8. All relationships end, so allow yourself to grieve. It is inevitable, every relationship will end one way or the other. Some relationships end mutually, some with separation, some with divorce, some with death. Whenever you are going into a relationship, always have it at the back of your mind that someone will leave first, no matter how long it takes. So you should prepare for the time of grief. When you grieve over the end of a relationship, it is because you can no longer have your intimacy needs met. The end of something and the introduction of something stressful and hurtful can also bring grief. However, the pain of grief is severely felt when you struggle and hold on to something that is already gone. Holding on is the saddest part of letting go. Having stronger feelings after a relationship than you ever experienced while it was going on is a sign that your grief is reviving not just the present loss but past losses too, maybe from your childhood. In the face of such grief, your ego shows up in the form of frustration and fear. But you must be willing to let go. When a relationship ends either due to death, separation, or divorce, find a place where you can grieve alone and let go. Do not try to avoid grieving by jumping into a new relationship, it never works. Allow the grieving process to help you grow. The person you find after you have grieved, reflected, and remained alone for a while is more likely to be at a higher level of maturity. This is why you must wait before jumping into a new relationship. The end of a relationship should not bring hate or violence. There will always be unresolved issues and sleepless nights when a relationship ends, however, do not be deceived by partners who sit on the fence. They never mean well. Also, do not try to manipulate your ex into whatever response you desire. Just let it go. Conclusion The type of parenting in your childhood can affect your adult relationships. Also, you should know that your relationship is not just about you but about everyone around you. 
So don't blame everything wrong with your adult relationships on your upbringing or some other factors. Different things may have happened when you were a child or naive adult, but you're wiser now. You have the power to influence your thoughts, perceptions, actions, and your life in general. By being committed in giving and receiving the five A's, you can work relationship problems out, and your relationship can thrive and be successful. Remember the five A's? They are attention, acceptance, appreciation, affection, and allowing. Success in a relationship is essential to your personal growth because it makes you believe success is possible in every other area of your life. Commitment and trust in a relationship help you let go of your ego, competition, and trying to win arguments. Even when you have disagreements, they do not last, and you can resolve them because you are committed and willing to make things work. Giving and receiving intimacy is possible if you can ask for what you want and listen to your partner to know what they want. Asking for what you want gives your partner the gift of knowing you, your needs, and your weaknesses. No relationship should take away your human rights. Rather, it should make you better. You can meet your adult challenges by addressing, processing, and resolving your issues by practicing mindfulness and loving kindness. Finally, by losing the FACE of the inflated ego, fear, attachment, control, and entitlement, you can become the kind of person your partner is grateful to spend the rest of their lives with. So this concludes our audiobook. If you like this type of content, smash the like button, subscribe to get notified with the latest uploads, and share this with anyone who needs it. And if you're interested to buy the book, check out the link in the description. Thank you and see you next time.